Testing, testing. Oh, shit. I got volume. <laughs> All right. I'll bring in the chats real quick. Fingers crossed, maybe. Uh-oh. What's going on? There it goes. Oh, oh, oh. oh, let's see here. Is it working? Is everything working? We see you rolling. We not <laughs> <laughs> oh, leave it to Haas. Oh, my goodness. Burner count, where are you at, man? Call it out. Let's go. Are we good? Not good? Uh-oh. Oh, we're good? Yep. No? Yes? No? I'm really disappointed in burner account. Oh, man. Mom says it's it's good. Okay. Well, ooh, I'm a chair. Oh, my God. Okay, so we're good. We're good. We're ready for <laughs> us. Wait for him to at least get on the show. Okay, give me a break, dude. <laughs> oh, man. 
I'm making sure everything's working. Give me a second, guys. There's a little bit of a lag on YouTube, and I don't know why, but we're still going to run the show. Okay, let's get let's get this thing. <laughs> Barrick, <laughs> if you can see the comments, uh, feel free to cuss out Haas when you come on. No, I'm just I'm just putting that out there. Any. <laughs> <laughs> see look Derek's Derek's even commenting he's like ban Haas I, yeah we should probably ban Haas anyways alright let's do this oh if you're reading this you owe me a 10k negative Ghost Rider <laughs> I've got four 10 kegs in my garage I'm just saying but I'm not giving any up no alright let's see if I remember how to do this I don't know if I do yeesh Anyways, here we go, guys. Tuner Brand, uh, TunerBrand.com. Here's the thing. Coffee. Yes, Tuner Brand just launched coffee uh, Monday. Yeah, uh, Was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. Holy shit. Yesterday. And um, it's available. Pretty cool. Go check it out. TunerBrand.com. It's uh, first thing on the website. And um, <clears throat> believe it or not, there is a uh, little special going on that if you buy one thing of coffee, you can actually get one of the shirts and type in uh, TB Coffee, Winter Brand Coffee, TB Coffee, and get 10% off a shirt uh, at checkout. So, uh, I had to grab a pizza out of the oven. <laughs> okay, Burner, kind of let it slide. Um, so, go check it out, tinderbrand.com. Coffee launched yesterday, available now in grounds or beans super super cool go check it out okay just say it just say it uh also don't forget guys performance custom coatings ryan real i got him hold on here we go custom knives right here custom red dot knives look at that uh go check it out dude he still i think he still has 20 like 20 or 21 left of these okay now word on the streets he messaged me now word on the street is he's going to come up with something for the last few knives that are remaining like you buy a knife you're going to get something cool uh to go along with it now what that item is i don't i mean i know but i'm not going to say i know and i'm not going to say what it is because uh i want it, i want him to announce it so just be on the lookout for that okay um also while you're at it don't forget to get one of his fresh edge tools if you guys don't know what these things are get one okay these things are absolutely freaking amazing as you see fresh edge right it's got the two holes you can mount this and that is for your squeegees you know how they get dull nicked up over the overtime and all that kind of stuff all you gotta do is spray a little slip solution on here right Take it, slide it across, and you will have <laughs> a fresh edge. So go check it out, Performance Custom Coatings. Get you one of these and get one of the custom knives, preferably one of the uh, limited edition. There was only 50, I think there's like 22, 23 left. So go check it out, Ryan Real. okay? Get that. I'm just gonna set that right there for now. Okay, uh, and of course, can't forget this. If you guys don't know, you've been living under a rock. That's right, guys. Tintwiz.com. Download your free 30-day trial. Tintwiz coaches everywhere. Matter of fact, I think there's one or two that are in the chats right now. And uh, don't forget to go check out the Facebook group, the Tintwiz community. Literally, you can type in any question and you'll get an answer pretty quick. So if you guys need help, um, any kind of advice of how to get things set up, Go check it out on Facebook, Facebook, and don't forget to download your free 30-day trial at tintwiz.com. The best, the best CRM in our industry. We'll do anything. Okay, go check it out. Cool. All right. I say we get ready to start the show because I know Derek's probably just like, dude, get this shit over with. <laughs> <laughs> He's got places to roll to. Um, anyway, so I'm going to turn this chat off. And I, I think we should start the show like we normally do, right? I mean, it's Tuesday. 
show's live. Everybody's in here. Everybody's waiting for the guest. So without further ado, let's start the show. Let's go. And that's right, guys. It is Tinder Tuesday live right here on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. And um, yeah, there it is. So we're live. <laughs> I was going to say something else, and then it kind of like, I, I don't know where it went, but it's all good. It's all good. Uh, I'm just looking. Let's see who else is in here. Uh, Rico's in here. Uh, Robert, my boy Ross, Jason, what's up? Corey Ashby. I know mom's in here. I know Sharon's in here. We all know Haas is in here. Burner. Uh, George is in here. Uh, let's see here. I'm just kind of scrolling through. Make sure I catch everybody. Uh, Cash is in here. All right. We got the whole, we got the whole weekly, weekly clan up in the chats. So that's good. And uh, all right. So let's do this. Okay. So my guest tonight, if you guys saw the last show, uh, my guest was Sean, uh, Bogler. And, um, here's the thing. We went over to, um, Derek's shop to help him out, uh, for a cause. And we were talking about it on the last show and I, I messaged Derek and I was like, Hey, you want to be on this week's show? And he's like, dude, I got nothing good to say. <laughs> And I said, yes, you do. Yes, you do. Uh, absolutely, you do. And I and I told him, I was like, I think it would be kind of a cool um, follow-up, in, in a sense, um, from having Sean on the show. And um, I thought, why not, right? So he's like, all right, cool. So here's the funny thing. About maybe 45 minutes ago-ish, he messaged me. He's like, all right, so I've got 13 questions you can't ask me and only three that I'm allowed to ask you or however he worded that. And I was just like, are you serious? <laughs> I said, okay, what are they? He goes, dude, you know, I'm just bullshit. And I was like, I know you are. I just, I was going to play, uh, play along, but, um, anyways, I love this guy and, and I'm sure we'll talk about a little bit of, you know, the situation that happened that brought all of us over to his shop. Um, but fantastic. Um, uh, great installer great business owner uh him and his wife do a fantastic job and i tell you what for everything that he's gone through and for him to have such a um a, still a, a very positive outlook on life and and the way things are and he puts a little bit of laughter on the back end of it just says a lot about his character and for the fact that he could put up with me for a week at a shop says a whole, whole lot <laughs> but anyways uh, so my guest tonight is Derek Body, and uh, Derek, are you ready? I can see you, so just tell me if you're ready. Are you ready? He just fucking left. He's like, nope, I'm out. <laughs> he literally like, he like ducked out of the fucking chair. <laughs> like, Never mind, show's over. Fuck it. Uh, he just wheeled himself off the show. Uh, anyways, guys, <laughs> my guest tonight, Derek Body. Everybody, let's welcome him in. Oh. Oh, we're on. Hey, what's up, man? What's up, Derek? How are you? <laughs> All right. Uh, you good? How you been, man? I'm doing well. Uh, welcome to the show, man. Welcome, welcome. Don't be I nervous. Like music. Just... <laughs> I was jamming. I was dancing. I was like, oh, you've been putting a camera on right now. He's all like... <laughs> <laughs> A fist bump. Best elevator music yeah. ever. I like it. Jersey B or Jersey Shore shit. No, anyways. Oh, yeah. Um, seriously, uh, welcome to the show. I and uh, uh, to my knowledge, this is your first podcast, or is this? Yeah, I don't. I don't really do cameras and stuff. I just. I'd like to hang low, out of the spotlight. Yeah. <laughs> That's I like to right. just you know get under people's skin a little sometimes <laughs> with my snide no. comments, but okay. I don't like well, to be here's, in. <laughs> you, no, here's the thing though, is, is uh, whenever, whenever I kind of flip through Facebook and I see like, you know, the people that we know on a, uh, uh, on that level and every time someone posts something, you always sneak in there and you're <laughs> just like the low jab and everybody's like, Damn. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, I wore my backspace out, you know, it's like, uh, <laughs> No, don't Peter do that. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, here's here's the thing. Um, first off, let's do this. Uh, if you don't mind, just kind of giving everybody like quick background, who you are, where you're at, you know, the name of your company, how long you've been tinning, and then we'll just kind of go from there. 
Well, most of you know me. Um, some of you don't have a clue. I don't know. I'm Derek. One of the kind of kicked off the uh, tennis for our cause. One of the first kind of helpies that they did. They did some things, but this was like the first official uh, tennis for our cause. Uh, we'll get more into that a little bit later. Uh, live in Knoxville. Uh, my shop is just outside of Knoxville, about 30 minutes in a smaller city called Merrillville. It's actually huge in size, but population, it's, it's growing rapidly. Um, we've been in business at that location for five years. I've worked for several other shops before that. My wife and I did have a audio tint shop down in Florida that we ran. Um, you know, and it was about that we were starting to have kids and just the Florida education wasn't there for us and just the people we just we wanted to change scenery um, I grew up with seasons I wanted to live in a place that had seasons and I want my kids to kind of experience that too so we decided Tennessee um, there's a lot that we love about it uh, the economy is great the people are very friendly the drivers are better than Florida drivers still not good <laughs> um, so we just packed up and left uh, I, I, I hit Knoxville. I started jumping around to shops, looking for some work, found a job, landed a job. Uh, they helped move us there. And, uh, you know, we delayed our plans. The plan was to eventually reopen shop. And it took, I don't know, six, seven years before we finally said, okay, let's just do it. And, you know, and that's, we, again, I worked for a bunch of other shops, opened our own shop. It's, it's going good. So it's not like we're new to it. I've been doing uh, window tint since 94 off and on right out of high school. I graduated in 93, 94, installed my first quarter window. Um, and it was always a fallback for me. You know, I got into automotive. I did, uh, I was a, I'm a certified ASC master tech for GM. I was for 10 years, wrenched for 10 years. And I said, screw this, this sucks. <laughs> I went back to an audio shop. I love car audio. And that just back into tinning again. Here we go. I did tried to get out of it several times, but it's just, it's always been around. It's, it's like a tumor. That tint tumor just won't go away. <laughs> you know? Keep coming back to it. It pays well. You guys know what it's like. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like girls. Mass money. Yeah, it's kind of like girls being strippers. Like they, it's hard for them to quit. <laughs> I know nothing about that. I don't either. Um, anyways, uh, <laughs> no. I, here's the thing. Um, you know, I've I've never been to Tennessee, and uh, you know, and we'll 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 kind of get into this a little bit uh, here in a little. Um, but when, when Dillinger asked me if, if I had time to come out and you know, what the, the reason and everything behind it. And I'm like, dude, I've never been to Tennessee. Let's go. And, uh, let me tell you, no offense to you or your shop, but Tennessee sucked because it was cold. It's it still suck. And, I, and uh, you guys want to do it in January. I'm like, what idiots? Why do you want to come here in January? <laughs> it's going to be cold. It doesn't have to snow, but thanks to Dave, it snowed. Yeah. <laughs> And then uh, Dillinger got us lost. I don't know. Uh, I think every single time that we try to get to your shop, he was taking like five different directions and he kept blaming the Apple Maps. Phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, it, regardless, uh, it was it was a great time. It, it really was. I mean, I know I know I probably came off a little strong uh, the first time I met you and your and your wife. And you guys probably looked at me and, and probably looked at Dillinger and was like, who invited this motherfucker? You know, <laughs> not at all. Love it. Love the but, energy. But the the thing is, is is um, when uh, when there's tragedy, and I, I deal with tragedy a little different than a lot of people. Um, you and me both. I I try to I try to uh, cope with uh, humor in a sense. Um, so that's just how I came across and I, I felt bad. Cause I was just like, fuck man, this guy's, this guy doesn't even know who the fuck I am. You know? And I'm sitting there going, God, he's probably cussing like out the storm. We probably leave the shop and he's probably telling his wife that dude, this guy's got to go, you know? But, um, in all reality, dude, it, it was, it was, it was an honor. It was a pleasure to, to be there to help you out. And, uh, it, it actually turned out to be a really, really good time. So I thank you for, you know, opening your doors to to all of us especially me and um I, I just i i can't thank you enough and um it was just a great time it was it was a really good time um it was a surprise and a shock more than anything you know it's it's when all when that whole ordeal went down dave contacted me david and he's you know he wanted to do the same got with dean uh and then of course we got with um i mean and dave just just got that job with autobahn so i'm like yep dude you're gonna ask them to do it was a big deal you know uh, it was a really big deal just a not just the time off of work but it's not anything 
Autobahn artwork related for him. You know, it was just it's just a side quest, and he had to go do this thing. It's like he wanted to do it. I got to do it. I know I just started here, but we're gonna ha- make this happen. Um, yep. And at the time, we were still pretty early on in our recovery, so it was, man, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. You know, when when we first started planning it, it's like, how am I gonna? As far as I know, I'm done. You know, we're I'm not going back to the shop for a while. And, and we were, God, we were close for nine months. You know, so having tennis for a cause come in and step in, it was it was huge for us. It's like we still have bills to pay. I had shop yep. rent to pay. And, you know, shop owners that are out there and employees, if you've ever been out of work, kind of against your will, it's like you can't do nothing. (laughs) And nine months was a long time to have to financially support it. So, you know, we were very grateful for you guys stepping in and tennis for a cause. We saw this as just and you see that it's blown up. It's really helped out a lot of people in the industry. And it's, it's done exactly what I think Dean envisioned and all the other guys that really got it going. Um, and it's still growing. It's still growing from there. Um, but when you guys want to come down, it's like January. I'm still wadded up. I can't. I can't hardly move. <laughs> and then when I come down, it's going to be cold and snowy. I don't know if I can book any cars. People know that we we are in a pretty tragic accident. And are we open? So it was like, how do I announce this? And it was just, it's not something I'm used to doing. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm kind of the quiet shop. But it worked. And absolutely, I mean, we were busy every single day. Every day, yeah. I, every day. <laughs> Dave still hates me for that. All the fun cars that we brought in, the Corvette, the CRX, and uh, God, I think we had a Dodge Stealth in there too, didn't we? The the or, or a three thousand GT. Three thousand GT, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Some and Hoss, Hoss remembers, oh man, Haas remembers the uh, the GT. And so do I because um, Haas and I were doing the windshield, and he was uh, uh, Dillinger was doing the back window, and he was. He was not having fun, and Hoss and I were in the in the the front seats, and we were just clowning around. And oh my god, it was getting on Dillinger's last nerve. I was trying to do what I could do, but I mean, dude, it was fun. No, no, no dude, it was pretty tough. It was, oh. it was absolutely fun. Um, you know, it, it was it was an experience for me. Uh, you know, um, uh. Dean Mitchell told me about the whole idea behind Tenders for a Cause way mm-hmm. before. And, um, you know, I was just like, that's really cool. He's like, you know, would you be willing to kind of like, you know, jump on board when things happen and, and do stuff? Because I was kind of like independent at the time. And I was like, yeah, dude, like whatever you need, you know, Dean, you, you just tell me and I'll, I'll make it work. And then when Dillinger made that call to me and, and he told me the whole thing and I'm like, uh, what week? absolutely i mean i booked the flight and everything and and i was i was ready to go i'm like i can't i can't say no to that no way no way to, to have you guys all out there and then and it was also i think some of the guys well dean obviously was with expel um david was with autobahn were you who, who were you with at the time i i was completely like independent just independent I was, yeah i wasn't right. doing anything <laughs> right and then of course sean coming now with solar effects you know our film it was just it was really cool to see all these different brands and guys just working together, um, not yep. caring about the product and just doing our thing. Yep. You know, it, was, it, yep. it was cool. It was fun. Yeah. And that's, um, uh, that's, what's really cool about the, you know, uh, I, I'm not going to use the word, uh, I, I don't want to use the word uh, event cause it's not an event. I mean, just, um, no, it was saving my ass. <laughs> it was saving your ass. Yeah. Uh, but like you said, you know, it was tough. Uh, having having different people from different uh you know sides of the industry whether it's brand or you know someone work for another shopper i mean whatever whatever the case may be for all of us to come in and it's like like you said we didn't care whose film we were using we were all just having fun knocking out cars making sure you you know got that money and and put it to good use and you know even though you were just rolling around in a wheelchair cussing at us and you know, for me it was <laughs> for me it was more of because I did put out a lot of questions with our, with our customers and followers that we have is that we're not out of business. Um, there was a couple shops locally that were telling people we were closed and we weren't coming back. That hurt us more than anything, you know, and it's like, it, no, it's we're going to be back. Don't worry about that. And I'm going to you're busy right now because we're not here. <laughs> you know, it was kind of we were booked six weeks out and it was November and we were we were jamming along to be six weeks out in november with the snow forecast is just 
it was an unusual winter. <laughs> it's like, how can this happen right now? We were, we were doing, we were at the three year mark, you know, which is kind of the turning point in some businesses. It's a little bit early still. Um, but I had developed a following just from working at other shops. I had people seeking us out. So I knew we'd be okay. You know, I knew we're, we're going to bounce back. It's kind of like starting over again. Here we are day one. Let's see what we can do. And it's, it was a good way of letting our customers know that we were still doing our thing. Uh, we're going to grow from there and dig back out of this hole. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and let's just, let's fast forward from uh, when we were all at your shop to now. I mean, how's business been? I mean, has it picked up or have, have, have you seen that? that nice it's been good. Um, it's been really good. Uh, When we got back going again, and I mean, we were closer to a good nine months. Um, I called a couple of my longtime customers that have been waiting, waiting. I'm like, just go get it to somewhere else. You know, it's don't worry, go here, go there. They do good work. Don't worry about it. And I had some people that, no, nope, you're my guy. I want you to tip my car. You no, know, I'll wait. I don't care how long it is. I had a customer wait almost six months before I could even attempt it. And it was a little Mini Cooper, not tinted out five or six cars of his. So he brought it in. It took me five hours to tint this thing. I mean, it was awful. I'm like, okay, I'm not ready yet. I can't do it. I would like tint one window and just be drained. I'm done. I do another window. I'm like, okay, too early. So we waited like two more months before we started trickling the work and slowly schedule more people. But we've gotten back to full speed. Um, you know, limpy hobbly speed, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm like, I'm off on the chair. Um, but we're, we're staying pretty steady. It's it's been a, a weird economy. A lot of you guys are feeling that we've been we've been busy. We've been a little slow. We've been busy again. We're, we're at that height again. Where yeah, we're booked out a couple of weeks. So it's been it's been good. Um, the accident kind of let me know that I need to grow. I need to expand. I need guys working for me. I need this to operate when I'm not here. Um, that's kind of what we're looking forward to towards the future. If something like this were to ever happen again, you can't just boom, shut your doors and be done. You got right. you got to get some sort of sustainability. For me, that's been a huge hurdle that I just I haven't been able to get over yet. <laughs> I'm such a control freak and just I'm so meticulous no. about the way I want things done. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, not. I did hire a couple guys and I let them go, and I was just like, <laughs> it's not going to work. I need to train someone fresh. They were experienced tinners. Um, they were pretty good, but. I know it's, it's one of those things where when you hire people, they're great when you're there, but as soon as you turn your back and you got something to do, are they going to produce that same amount of work? Yeah. Because sometimes you look at their own vehicles and you're like, what happened to that? And they just didn't care. So it's like, oh, I'm not going to work. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <Yeah>. a, <laughs> this is a, this is a really hard industry to yeah. hire yeah. people um, and be trustworthy employees. It's, it's hard. It is hard. I, I, I thought to, you know, I thought to, uh, shop owners on, on a regular basis. I, I do because of my job now. And, uh, every time I talk, they're just like, Hey, what's the, what's the best way to hire someone or, or keep them around? And I'm like, man, you find that secret, <laughs> let everybody know. <laughs> Cause you know, yeah, I, I think you gotta start it from scratch, you know, bring them in young, yeah. uh, something yeah. hourly. It's, it's getting to that point has been a, a mountain more than a recovery mountain. <laughs> Yeah, um, no, it's, it's difficult. Um, and it, the, the thing is, is that, you know, a lot of installers will come in and, and even if they've never uh, installed before, I mean, even new guys, I mean, they'll come in and once they kind of start to know the, the routine and this and that, and they start to kind of figure out going, wait a minute, he's making how much and I'm making how much and, and I, I can buy film myself. I can buy my own tools. Like, I mean, it's not rocket science. I mean, let's just be honest. It's not. Um, but just like Sean and I talked uh, on the last show, it's like, there's some guys that are good just being installers. And then there's guys that are just good being owners. You know, some installers are not good. I'm being an installer. Owners. My wife runs the yeah. show. Yeah. <laughs> that woman's amazing. I mean, it's she's scheduling, she's, she's keeping me busy. She knows my capabilities, what I can do. And she schedules them accordingly. So the work gets yeah. done, done well, done on time, bills them out. I mean, I hardly ever see people anymore. I still, you know, because our name is the tint guy and they want to meet the tint guy so you know i'll go out there and, and shake hands with the customers and talk to them and whatnot we would like to change the name that's a whole nother story <laughs> i can't stand you know, it you got no dude don't uh, here's the thing it's working and you need to show your face also i mean do you have that rapport with your customer your customer base 
is is a bonus for you guys in a sense because if the customer sees the people knows the person up front they know it's a it's a team deal it's a husband wife shop you know this and that dude it's just a better feeling for the customer in my opinion That's it is point. it's it's again it's, it's one of those things it, it's a small family-owned company it's just me right. and my wife my daughter came in for a little while she didn't like it she's like nope I'm not doing it. She's just definitely scared of getting cut. I'm like, it's going to happen. Whatever. <laughs> so that didn't work out. And, but, but at the same t- uh, token, you want to grow. You want to expand that. But you don't want to get to that point where you almost feel commercialized. And you, and you lose that personal experience with the customer. Um, so, you know, we're kind of at a crossroads. Um, I'm getting older. I'm not going to do this forever. I, I think seven years and I'm done. I don't know if I can do it any more than that. Yeah. So do we just keep building a nest? working towards retirement um we've been putting a lot of money away as much as we can to try to work towards that but also i do want to keep it going after i'm gone um because you're gonna have customers out there you know yeah. they're, gonna, they're gonna want you to be there there's been so many shops that have just come and gone and for some of those reasons whether it was sustainability they don't have the people to take over or they're just they got old the old dudes are like i'm done and they close shop um so get it We've got a lot of planning to do. It's a very, very near future. Yeah. No. It, it, but here's the thing, dude. Is I I've seen. Say I I I mean I've seen from day one that I've been at your shop to now. I mean I I still I follow you. I see what you guys are doing, and I honestly don't think it's going to be a problem for you to do what you just said. I really don't. I mean, you are um, you're a known shop, like you said, family owned, ran. You're you're there you're established everybody thought you closed you didn't so everybody's still coming to you like Mm -hmm. i don't see anything for for you to guys to get to where you want to go and kind of step back and let and let that keep going i don't think it's going to be an issue for you i don't see it the the accident was a blessing in disguise it it was a big eye opener for us um you know we went to utah last year to see our daughter that's one thing we want to do is travel a little bit i mean the world's huge and we haven't seen it (laughs) Um, yeah. yeah, it's uh, we got plans uh, this this year. We'd like to go to Vegas for our thirtieth anniversary. Never been. <laughs> You've never so, been to Vegas. I'm forty nine years old. I've never been to Vegas. That's what I mean. We need to get out and travel and stop freaking working so damn hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here's, I mean, you 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 knew uh, that I was doing all that traveling. You know, yeah, like it's awesome. Period. And um, it, here's the thing. Was it was it absolutely fantastic? Not necessarily. Did I love it? Yeah. Um, the problem was is that uh, I was doing a lot of traveling by myself, uh, and dude, I tell you, I didn't know if I was coming or going. It got to that point where I'm like, I was home for a week. I was gone for a week. I was home for a week. I was gone for a week, and I was just like, oh my god, I come home, empty my suit, uh, my suitcase, do laundry, do like adult things at my house. And then I was literally just putting things back in my suitcase and, and back out again. So I'm not saying traveling is a bad thing, but as much as I did, dude, it was an experience. I will <laughs> never regret it, but oh my God, I don't think I could do it again. I don't. I was, I was on the road a lot and it wasn't traveling for fun. Um, before I went back in the tent, I did fire alarms and security for six years. Um, and it was so much windshield time. I don't know how Dillinger does it. I, was yeah. kind of, I would have a service call from not, because we, we handle all the Kroger's all the Kroger store. So, and I was a Bosch certified tech, so I had to go out on the service calls and they'd be clear out in Nashville. So my service call would be, you know, three hour drive one way to replace a smoke detector because a Bosch guy had to do it. I'm like, dude, just turn it, pop it off, put the new one on, turn it. (laughs) You're good. No. So they'd send me out three hours in Nashville. I'd pop it in five minutes, clear the codes three hours back. And I'm like, uh, I don't want to travel like this. I want to no. hop on a plane. <laughs> yes, yes. No, it's it's the, it was definitely an experience, and I'll I'll, I'll never regret it. I, I won't. I mean, I I went all over the U.S. I I went to so many shops and met so many installers and and business owners and stuff like that. It was absolutely an experience, but I honestly don't think I could go back to it because it just burnt me out. I mean, I did over over 200 and something flights in two years like it was just no. it was nuts no thank uh, you like <laughs> you know i, you know, I think wagon guy at uh hoss's event his um you know toys for tots the, the, the toy mm-hmm. drive 
and just watching him over the last year, like year and a half, two years, it's dude, that's so cool. Yeah, I, no. If I was his age, I would have loved to have done that, especially with a skill that we have. We know Timmy something you can go practically anywhere on the world and do. Anywhere. Yes. Anywhere. anywhere. <laughs> oh, I need anywhere. a couple bucks. Let me fly to New Zealand. <laughs> you know, yeah. make some money. <laughs> Absolutely. And and you know, I if I was if I was young, like back in the day, okay, let's if we take what our industry is now and the the close group uh, group of guys that we all are now. If we had this back then, dude, I would have traveled like there was no tomorrow back then. I would have been like nonstop. But it dude, was different. I'm, it was definitely different. I'm older and I got I got way more responsibilities, you know, and stuff like that. And I'm like, dude, I cannot do this forever. There's no, there's no way. There's no way. Um, but regardless, go to fucking Vegas with your wife, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. It's it's dude. Gotta go. We'll see go. what happens. <laughs> oh, you gotta go. Um, Legs next year, we'd like to go somewhere out of country. Um, I don't even have a passport, so I mean, the first I bet is Canada. Before you needed passports, you know. <laughs> you, you better start so, getting your passport, man. You need you need to get out. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, absolutely, and I'm not yeah. I'm not pointing fingers at you saying that you personally need to get out. I'm to anybody watching. If you don't, anyone in out, general, you, I mean, it can your life can change like that. Oh and my god. There's so many little things that you take for granted and you just forget. I mean, just running around the kitchen table with the dog. I can't do that anymore. You know, it's, it's... no, you roll around. <laughs> no, I roll around. <laughs> <laughs> Still can't catch him. <laughs> no, it's just, here's the thing, man. Uh, like you, like you said earlier, like life's too short, dude. Life's too short. And there's so much to see out there. I mean, you don't have to travel far and go see a whole lot to just enjoy that trip. I mean, you can go somewhere short. Just, just take a weekend away and do something. Get out. You know, yeah. A lot oh of people get stuck in a routine and yep. they just, you know, they mow the lawn and they watch TV and go to a movie and that's their weekend. It's, no, no, man. no, no, no. <laughs> no, got to get out. You know, uh, you know, Janelle and I started uh, hiking last year, you know, and uh, I, dude, I'm, I'm so ready for this Colorado weather to to finally like catch up with other other people with summer. Just don't let Dave come see you. Hey, oh yeah, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because we're we're supposed to get snow on Thursday and Friday, and then uh, hopefully like go away this weekend. But I'm like, dude, I was I was telling Janelle, I'm like, I'm I'm ready to to, to get the backpack out, dust it off, and you know sit in the garage all winter. I'm ready to go start hitting some hikes. It was 85 today. It was roasting. Ah, uh, dude, I've trade you in a heartbeat. I would. Cause we got to yeah, take but next next Monday it'll be rainy and fifty. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to we got to taste the seventy four on uh, what was that Saturday on Saturday? And dude, I was we went to a rooftop downtown and just had a drink and, and a light lunch. And I was like, t shirt, and my skin was like, what the fuck is this touching you? It was the sun, and I'm like, fuck, it's <laughs> shit, that shit burns. <laughs> But it's hot. <laughs> yeah, you just here's the thing, man. You just got to get out and enjoy life. Uh, you really do. Um, so, you know, Janelle and I are trying to hit a bunch of, you know, uh, work visits and trying to hit up as many as we can. We've got a, a lot of requests for us to come out and see their shops and and stuff like that. And it's just, you know, we got a lot like to do, and it's hard. It's so hard. I like your hiking posts. When you post those pictures, you guys just out on a nice little hike. Love it. Uh, we. We uh we we bust each other's you know we bust each other up but it's 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 a blast dude uh it, you know the, the last one we went on was I don't know I think round trip was like twelve miles and I wanted to kill her I did dude. <laughs> I, I was just like you I was like you put me on this fucking thing I mean we were all the way at the top of the mountain went all the way down and then all the way across just to, to go look at um, a reservoir and I looked at her and I was like we got to always and she's like yeah let's go all the way back and i'm just like fuck, I'm gonna you, need, die. you need to come back to knoxville and and yes. you know summer or late summer towards fall fall is absolutely beautiful here the the weather's nice um we've got some nice country to really explore and see nice rivers a couple we just, were just a lot of cool stuff to do we were talking about tennessee uh just a couple of weeks ago we were talking about spots and and tennessee got brought up so um, I know it's definitely on our list. Uh, she found, ah, damn, I can't even remember the name of it, but she found a, a TikTok or something that was over in Tennessee. And I'm like, 
oh, we can go see Derek. Well, we <laughs> it's you know, you know, we're seven hours from one end to the other end of the state. It's we really need to be two different states because the western side of Tennessee is vastly different from eastern side. Yeah, um, no, just you guys are the the landscape changes completely. Yeah, <laughs> yep. everything about it changes, and it's I'm not a big fan of that side, what Nashville area. Uh, over there by Randy. <laughs> I've been there a couple times. I spent enough time over on that side. <laughs> no I like it over here. I like it over here. No offense, Randy. I need to go see his shop sometime. I need to get out there. Dude, you should. He's only like two hours away. Oh, my God. I can't believe yeah. you have to run to a shop. Two hours? I mean, that's, that's nothing. Brown Man, we're about two and a half to Chattanooga, so we're a nice central hub to all these locations. Two hours to Atlanta. Two, two and a half to Atlanta. Dude, you are kind of central. I didn't realize you were mm -hmm. two hours to Atlanta. Wow. Yep. I don't know. Dillinger just said buy a plane ticket. And I said, okay, so that's where I ended up. I didn't even re really realize where we were. But um, What does he know about planes? Yeah, well, not not a damn thing. You can ask him about <laughs> cars because he drives everywhere. Um, I do want to ask you a, a couple of questions. Hey, look at this, dude. We're at 42 minutes, man. I, like It goes like this. And He's we, already looking to cut me off. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, like, we, me and you haven't really had a chance to, like, you know, talk and, and, and just kind of bullshit and catch up because, I mean, you've yeah, been no, yeah. too busy. Um, you know, and that's what the show's about is just, you know, it's just us talking, you know, the, the people watching, they're just kind of grabbing information and stuff like that. So it's just kind of us bullshitting. Um, but I do kind of want to ask you something. And I ask, you know, everybody that's on the show is, um, you know, you've been tending since 94. Uh, from 94 to now, I mean, do you see like a huge, big change in the industry or anything that maybe needs to be changed? Like, what's your thoughts on the growth on our industry since since 94 to now? I mean, because we're talking a long span of time. I'm, because I was an automotive tech, um, and I'm going to tie that with window tinting. And the biggest gripe I see on every group and every form is pay. How do we pay these guys? Commission, salary, salary plus commission per car. If we could develop a flat rate system, you know, to help everybody out, kind of like being an auto tech, this job is going to pay me two hours to do it. You know, it's a Camry. Flat rate on a Camry is going to be like 1.8 hours, whatever. Whether it takes you two, three, five hours or 30 minutes, you're going to get paid that 1.2, 1.8 hours. And if we could standardize that in the tin industry, because each car is different. Each install is different. F-150s are cake. You know, they're in and out. It's yeah. kind of like an oil change in the automotive industry. It's in and out. You get paid. We got used to get paid four tenths of an hour to do an oil change. F-150, four tenths of an hour, whatever. And you go by like a book time. I think that would solve a lot of the gripes in the industry. And then you have your your rate. You know, you're you're at 20 bucks an hour. He's at 25. He's at 40 an hour. He's a seasoned vet, whatever. And you have that opportunity to turn a lot of time, bang out some cars and be done with them. So, you know, it's, it's some, a little bit of an incentive to get the job done. There's going to be screw ups. There's going to be things like that. And, and same with the automotive industry. You're going to snap a bolt or something. You're going to have to torch something off and it's going to take you an extra amount of time. But you're getting paid that book time regardless. So there's good and bad about it. But I think that's something that we could that could work in the tent industry, you know, as, as a whole. As far as how has it changed? Man. I don't know if the tin industry has changed more than the people uh, in it. Um, I see a lot of younger guys coming in, and I like that. Um, people aren't wanting to go to college as much. You know, they're, they're looking to get into a skilled trade. I think when I was growing up, and, and you and our younger guys, got to go to college, got to go to college. If you don't do college, join the military. It's like, well, window tinting gives you an opportunity of, of a skill that can pay very well. Um, and there's a lot of young, there's a lot of young guys in it, you know, and when I was learning, I don't, I was the young guy, but there wasn't a lot of us. It was all old veterans trying to teach us and, and the better you got at it, you realize how much they actually sucked at it. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, what the hell did he teach me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I do, uh. I do like the the, uh, the 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 pay scale. I like that. Mm -hmm. um, I've never been a mechanic, and, I, and I've always heard the you know how the mechanics get paid on the on that that rate. Um, I never thought about implementing into our industry. 
and that's that's kind of different. I'm wondering if that would work. I don't I see why it wouldn't. Would. You know, we know how long it takes to tint right. a certain car, and and the guys that can do it faster reward them by doing it faster. They're getting paid for that full time that they got it done, even though they got it done in less time. So that comes with experience. Is, so how would you how would you how would you build that that rate scale? Because it's just like um, plotter software. You know, you got guys that that they give you a price list on there. They give you a price a generalized pricing for that car, um, and there's guys that make those patterns and upload them. And, and same with the automotive industry, there's a group of people that do it, well, they do it with hand tools, and they come up with a book time of how long this car should take on average, and they'll have a bunch of different guys tin it or whatever, come up with an average, that's what this car should pay. Okay, okay, because that's, all right, now now that you say it like that, now now that makes more sense, because uh, I'm like, man, I mean, how are you going to figure that out? I mean, if you've got someone who's been doing it, you know, let's just say someone who tints for a Ford dealership, and they know that, that truck, and they can get it done in 15 minutes, Versus someone who does nothing. But I think that's how dealers get paid. I, I don't know. Is there any any dealer tinters watching or anyone we know in the groups? Uh, they might get paid that way. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. I just, uh, it'd be kind of interesting how you would get the average. It would be, that's that's where I'm like, how, how are you going to get that average number? And who are you going to ask to get the average number from? Like, are you going to take two people who have been doing it for 20 years and two people that have been doing it for five years and then average that time? I don't know. I think it's doable, though. I really do. I just, you would have to set some kind of a bar somehow. And uh, it's, it's just like the automotive world. I mean, you get your, your shop helpers in there that are, you know, usually they start out as like a lube tech or something. And that's an hourly guy. They're going to get paid an hourly rate. When they yeah. can work themselves into flat rate and become a flat rate tech, that's when you make that move. Um, but yeah, for guys that are still fresh in the industry, learning, you're going to pay them a different amount. Obviously, they're not going to come in at a certain percentage to start banging cars out. Right. I like that. You should probably maybe come up with something like that, Derek. There's your retirement right there. Come up with the, the tent Bible. You, you look up the car that you got in the shop. <laughs> yeah, just right up there. Right or, or it's it's you can get with the uh, you know with the, the tinner soft uh, the tint software out there or even PPF software and and uh, it's going to be right there. You're going to have your your make model. You select it. It's going to have how much film usage you got, which they already have approximate square footage of film and and a, and a general price. There's my labor time. This car should take me two point three hours. Cool. I got it done in an hour and a half. <laughs> Derek, here's the thing, man. You're talking about retirement in seven years. <laughs> I'll come you up with it. Be, there you go. <laughs> you should be coming up with this and figuring it out and start building it. Like, well, I am the world's slowest tinter, so it won't work for me. <laughs> Why? Well, I, I don't know. You can roll around pretty fast on a wheelchair, but, you know. Yeah, as long as there's no snow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, wait a minute. Or ramps. That, 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 wait, hold on. You got up that ramp at, uh, what was it, Texas Roadhouse? I think it's where Texas we Texas Roadhouse, man. Yeah, you, dude, you got up that ramp in the doing snow. Doing a burnout. Us, dude, I was just like, what the fuck? You was just, yeah. Oh, I got like burn on my hands. But we got a little hill at the end of our street, and I was rolling, and it got out of control. I'm like, the brakes weren't working. They're just squealing the tires. I'm like, oh, shit, here we go. I'm hitting the ditch. <laughs> <laughs> Neighbors are probably looking. What is this asshole doing? What, what is this oh, guy doing? Jeez, <laughs> dude, that, that shit was so funny. I mean, it was. I mean, we look back funny because uh, you were just in good spirits at that time. But it's it's not. I'm not saying it's funny for anybody that has to go through that because it's that's horrible. But uh, your situation, uh, it was it was just funny. Like you, you every time I said something, you literally took it, turned around, and threw it right back at me, or you threw it at uh, Haas or, or Dave, and I just like, oh, this guy's hilarious. <laughs> um, all right, so 50 minutes. Uh, let's let's do this. I do. We can sit here and talk uh, all night. Um, but let's let's do a Q and A real quick. Sure. And I just got to bring in the chats. See, I told you, dude. It, you had nothing to be nervous about. It'd go pretty quick. Oh, well, I'm in space, man. Uh, I see that, dude. Be nervous in a spaceship. Well, all, right. all right, before before we do this, <laughs> what is that behind you? What is it exactly? I'm in my little man cave gaming room. Um, that was my daughter worked for a movie theater, and when um, 
Solo came out. Remember the Solo movie? That was like the marquee prop thing. And she used to bring home all these cool movie props and shit. And I'm like, I want that. Oh. I gotta have that. So it's, it's kind of like background to my gaming PC. <laughs> I fucking love it. I fucking love it. Um. All right. So I think the chats are working. I don't know. We'll see. I, don't know, I can't see them. On any you screen. should. I think it takes a minute for it to to cycle through, but they are they are up. Uh, if you guys have any questions or anything like that that you guys would like to say or ask Derek, this is your chance. And if they do, cool. Um, do you need me to fill anybody in on on, on the, what went down or what happened? We didn't really talk about it. About uh, yeah, really. no, we did. We just we just kind of like <laughs> do one of these things, like you know, yeah, whatever. Uh, it's all good. Uh, I mean, if you want to tell people exactly the accident, like, I mean, you don't have to go in like complete, huge, in depth. But yeah, no, we we'll, I mean, go for it. At the time, we had a, you know, we were hit by a drunk driver. She was not drunk. She was ODing on the fentanyl. Um, she was actually DOA on the scene, and they don't know if it was from the accident or from the drugs. Um, but she had no pulse. The lady that smashed into us. We were going around a left-hand turn in the road, and she just went straight. Uh, 55 miles an hour head on there was I had tried to obviously miss and I was all the way over in the ditch when we hit uh, we bounced off glided bounced almost 30 feet back where the accident picks were um, but yeah she's completely out of the wheel just I don't know you know hopefully it was a wake-up call for her too um, there's still a lot of anger obviously I don't really care what happened with her but hopefully she got her shit right like, hey, you almost died. Um, the first officer on scene was one of my customers. He's like, holy shit, my tent guy. Just, he thought he was pulling up to a, you know, a, a, just a, a deadly scene. <laughs> and he couldn't believe that we were still on there and, and alive and fine, somewhat fine. Um, but yeah, it, it, uh, I got pretty wadded up. Broken femur, left foot, right ankle, multiple ribs, cracked disc in my back. Uh, the wife broke both her arms, her wrists, hitting the dashboard. Her left foot, she had to get reconstructed because the transmission came through the firewall. Smashed her leg pretty good. Um, but yeah, to be able to live and survive through that was something. It was life-changing and I don't ever want to do it again. <laughs> no, no. And and for for anybody that has not seen the pictures um, of the accident, I, I did. And... Uh, um let me let me tell you something um i don't know and i don't care who you pray to or worship or anything like that but let me tell you something um someone was definitely looking over uh derek and his wife because uh oh oh god yeah here's uh, can you see that oh uh, there's a couple images unreal that is my ankle this is the tailless bone this Look is my guys. I was said I tried to, to miss her. I, I, you know, yanked the wheel. That was one week before the accident. I just had it ceramic coated, paint corrected. Uh, a good buddy of mine's got a shop down the road where I used to work. <laughs> We're still, you know, business friends and real friends outside of work. Um, but yeah, he did an excellent job. I had searched for two years. Yeah, rib fractures, surgeries. This is some of the stuff I couldn't post online because of the case and that's where my knee actually hit the dashboard but to think that we were in this you know um they had to completely cut the side of the car this is obviously the passenger side the wife i'm, I'm glad i took most of the impact you know it, it, it could have been real bad um that's the left foot broke everything wires that was the femur when your kneecap is back about six inches, you know something's not good. <laughs> um, yeah, they had to cut the whole side of the car open to get me out and yank me out of the thing. Uh, but yeah, it was it was quite traumatizing. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, oh, dude, that's just uh, that's crazy. That is just that's nuts. And you know, and I I, I saw the pictures you know, prior to this and, and I still, you know, and, and I got to actually be with you guys, you know, 
in that state like after and you know seeing how you guys you know still trying to function regular life and i'm like oh my god dude that's just it's insane it's insane you know um but here's the thing i look at you now and i you know i've seen a couple of posts of you know you and your wife on facebook and stuff and i i couldn't be you know more happy for you guys i know you guys are still kind of going through some some small things here and there um but every day <laughs> You're, Every day. You're, everybody you're, everybody it's 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 one of those things where you're just grateful that you're here you're happy um but you know there's whatever your struggle is there's somebody out there struggling 10 times what you're doing you know they, they absolutely yeah no and and you guys you guys are doing fantastic regardless i mean you guys are doing fantastic um you know uh anyways um all right so <laughs> yeah guys this 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 is a true survivor story. It, it really is. Uh, it was it was kind of crazy. Uh, Haas even said, you know, how things can change uh, literally in a blink of an eye. Uh, Absolutely. After- yeah, we, we were late leaving work. It was, you know, it was a Monday and <laughs> we had a customer picking up. It's like if we were just five minutes sooner. Just and like this. The state trooper that was on scene, he was a mile behind us. I mean, he was on the exit scene in 30 seconds. He was at my window. Like, where did you come from? And, and he, he talked about that too. He's like, you know, if I was just a couple minutes ahead of you. Um, and 911 there was so fast because the car that was following her was already on the call with 911 that this lady was swerving and barely making corners. And then, Damn. so they were there quick. Oh. They, were there, they were there quick. Uh, well, that, that's a blessing right there. I mean, that's just, oh my gosh. Anyways. Um, yeah, I just like my mom said, not just physically but mentally too. You know, I that's that's a lot to to deal with. Um memory's still a little fuzzy. I don't know if that's just old age or I'm blaming <laughs> it on the crash. <laughs> just just blame it. Blame it on all of us being at your shop and that we just drove you to fucking insane. A little frontal lobe swelling, so the short term yeah. memory is just kinda going. <laughs> Anyways, um all right, so if, if anybody has questions for Derek or want to say something um let's go ahead and do that real quick yeah fire away anything it don't matter yeah ask him how fast his wheelchair is <laughs> never clocked it it went down that hill pretty quick though it did go down that hill <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually wound up giving that to uh, one of my neighbors an uh, Indian couple they they're father was visiting from another country and he needed a wheelchair but they you know they're expensive so i was like here have this one <laughs> it's fast be careful <laughs> it ain't got no brakes <laughs> it ain't got no brakes oh <laughs> no uh, let's see uh let's see where are we let's see let's see what's uh, from your mom sure earlier mom. Uh, I think my mom said something earlier too, and I got to catch it. But this one just popped up. Do you work on back glass? Uh, not a hundred percent sure. Do I work on but... back glass? Um, yeah, it, it, it's terrible. Um, I dread doing cars. Um, there was a guy in the groups that stopped doing cars, and I seriously considered doing that for a while. I live in truck country anyway, so I'll probably do ten trucks to one sedan. Um, yeah, getting in and out of cars, coupes, you know, Camaros, Mustangs, they suck already. Um, but just the limitations of my limbs, um, I can't really, like when you kneel, when you kneel down, you know, your leg goes fully flat, whatever. Mine kind of sits up and my right ankle doesn't have a lot of movement. So when it's hanging off the seats, I can't really flatten my ankle. So yeah, they, I do them. I don't enjoy it, but I do them. <laughs> Uh, here's my mom's question. Uh, how many children in ages? Three girls. Sure, there's no hair. Uh, my oldest is 24. Uh, she is a park ranger out in Utah at the, uh, the Arches National Park. I think she's actually changing. I think she's getting a different job. Still doing park ranger stuff, but I think she's going to a different park. Um, my middle child, her 21st birthday is next month. No. Like any day now, <laughs> um, but yeah, she'll be, she'll be turning 21. 
So that's going to be fun. Take her out. Get her shit face. You know, it's your 21st birthday. Drink it all. Pass out. <laughs> Go along the hungry, kid. Uh, and then my youngest is uh, just turned 15. So working on getting her permit so she can start driving. Get another hand-me-down mom car. Um, but yeah, three girls. One left in the house. The other two have moved out. Uh, one lives, you know. One more to go. Doing the best I can. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, Haas, had any CRXs lately? Still the one, man. Still got my CRX. Um, I just got a windshield put in it. Hopefully uh, get some body work and paint done in the next year or two. Get it up to the way I want it. Uh, let's see. Eric, <clears throat> what is the outlook on rehab? How long are you, uh, how long are they telling you? Uh, well, this was almost two and a half years ago, Eric. Um, yeah. At the time, see, this is where I, Terrence for Cause, stepped in. We, whew, I just bought the car, had minimum coverage on it. Uh, when we moved from Florida to Tennessee, Florida has, you know, no fault. Uh, I'm sorry, uninsured motorist coverage is mandatory. It's not something you think about. Uh, we've been with our insurance company for like 20 something years. When we moved here, we said, we want the same coverage. Blah, 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 sign here. Blah, blah. We did not have uninsured motors coverage, so nothing was covered. Medical bills, surgeries, doctor bills, UT Hospital wrote off a ton of it, but we were still 40000 out of pocket to pay for everything. Rehab, rehabilitation was, they cut it in half, $50 a visit, and they wanted me to come three times a week, and my wife, so that's times two. There's no way I'm going to be able to afford $300 a week for rehab, physical rehab, um, when I'm not working. You know, and everything else is coming out of the pocket. So a good friend of ours who does physical therapy kind of gave us a rundown. This is what you can do. This is what I want you to do. And I still diligently do it every day. Um, I do my stretches, I, I, just everything you can. Um, again, I was telling Jason earlier, they gave me about a 20% recovery on my ankle, which not good. And the recovery is it's you hit a peak where things are going good and you kind of level out. And most people stay there and get stronger and stronger. With this type of injury, a talus fracture, um, you kind of hit that peak and it's a slow, slow downhill spiral. Um, got a little bit of necrosis in the bone. Necrosis is basically the edges of the bone where it doesn't meet up fully is not, you know, it's dying. You know, the, the bone's dying. So it's just dealing with the pain and different ways to cope with it as I get older. <laughs> But yeah, they didn't give me a really good outlook. <laughs> so what can you do? Hey, you're still here. That's all that matters. In my, in and, my, in my hobble mind. around, I just, you know, it's whatever. Pain is just, it's all in the mind. It's all up there. You just, <laughs> you keep on you trucking. Just, hey, you just need to have all of us back out of the shop and we'll just drink and, and laugh and joke at each other and you won't even remember anything. So I don't know. Uh, so George asked, what state do you live in again? Um, that is in Tennessee, uh, Knoxville, Knox, Knoxville area. Yeah. I am a halfback. I'm, uh, I'm originally from upstate New York, Rochester, New York, uh, up until I was 14. So my childhood was up in the, you know, the tundra. And then we lived in Southwest Florida for 25, almost 30 years, got tired of that and made our way halfway within, they call them halfbacks around here, New York, Florida, Tennessee. Perfect. <laughs> Uh, and then Haas was actually saying, um, not how many CRXs, uh, or what, what's the, the last CRX he was talking about, uh, tinning the CRXs. Yeah. Oh, tinting the CRX. Yeah. Actually I did tin another one since then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a story behind that one guys. Um, I am Haas. I saw that. Yes. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I have not tried bowling again. Um, that was, you know, the first time I tried to bowl. Um, the the funny thing with that wreck is I had bowled that Sunday or Saturday night, and that accident happened on that Monday, and my bowling balls were still in the car. They hit that back of the seat and bent it to a 45. So we were that close to getting hit by bowling balls. Would have survived the crash, killed by bowling balls. <laughs> uh -oh. Yeah. I, I, I tried it at Hoss's get together and I couldn't do it. Obviously you guys were, you know, getting out the little, little rolly dinosaur, push the ball down. And I was supposed to go bowling. I wanted to do it before the end of the year. Um, it just didn't happen. I, the, the, the night we were going to go bowling, I wasn't just, I was hurting. I'm like, it's not going to happen guys. I'm not going to try tonight. 
So I still need to get out there and try again. And it might be at Haas's shop next time. There you go. There you go. That's the way to do it. Put it all on Haas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so hilarious. Uh, he said he uh, killed my bowling balls. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they were, they were my dad's and, and they were because the car was part of state evidence. I couldn't get my personal belongings out of it, like just the really important stuff, you know, paperwork, wallet, stuff like that. But they had to keep the bowling balls for evidence because of the case. Um, Cause they gotta, you know, they gotta get do all their calculations of objects in the car and weight and they gotta scale it and all that other crap that I don't know. But yeah, they were in it for a year and surprisingly I got them back after it had gone through two winters and the summer. I'm like, all oh, these things are destroyed. They, they're sentimental. They're, they're my dad's boy. That year, I hate to bum me out even more. That year was one of the toughest years of my life. Um, yeah. I got COVID double pneumonia um, in July and my father passed away that August. I think some of you saw that post too, unexpectedly from complications. And then that accident in November. And it was like, can we just be done with this already? <laughs> it was yeah. boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was, it was definitely a rough year. Um, oh, God. You know, I, uh, I, you know, I, after Dillinger, you know, called me and he kind of told me the whole story behind, uh, you know, what was going on with, with you and, you know, your wife and everything like that. And uh, um, then he kind of told me. 77, George, back to back. Um, and then whenever whenever Dillinger kind of caught me up on some of that other stuff, I'm like, dude, this guy hasn't caught a break all fucking year. Like, holy shit. Yeah, let's let's go. Let's go. Let's go bring some fun into his shop and let's make him some money. So, yeah, that's, yes, that's crazy. <laughs> uh, it's it's you, life. You know, you're doing this. That's just life, did, man. Uh, did you answer George's question? What's the highest you bolt? Yeah, 277, back to back. I'm, I'm the same sanction game it was and then i filed that with a 140 something i don't even remember it was awful no <laughs> <laughs> oh, really man. good series no oh, you know i hearing and talking to you and having you on the show now and just your whole just everything about what happened two years ago and where you're at now and you know your goals and what you plan on doing it's really it's really good and i'm saying this from my own my own heart to you because i mean we've we've known each other for this long now and dude i I can't be happier for you i know you're still kind of struggling a little bit but everything that you're trying to achieve and where you're headed uh i couldn't be happier for you and your wife and and your kids and i I think you're going the right direction so um, it's it's for everybody you know and it's 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 some of those life lessons that you need to learn on your own and you hear all everybody tell you, you know, the one thing we have is time and you just need to just keep trucking. You're going to have ups and downs. Uh, life is definitely going to hit you square in the mouth and you're going to have to change your plans. And yep. uh, everybody has their own story. You know, I'm nothing. Our story is not special to me. It's just we deal with it the best we can and, and everybody needs to deal with their own, you know, <laughs> trials in life. Yeah, but uh your story what's like you just you just said you know your story is nothing special but maybe not to you but i will tell you this your story is special to me because i was there so it is special to me you know i talked to uh i talked to Haas, you know pretty frequent i mean we we try to talk to each other at least once once a week or so and and uh i don't i don't really think there's maybe once or twice since we've been at your shop that we've never brought up being at your shop so it was just fun man we, we had so much right. fun so your story means a lot to me because i was there and i share that story to a lot of people that i that i go talk to or you know even after i went to your shop and then all the shops i went to and everybody was just like you know i'm struggling and i would literally use you as an, as an example and i'd be like hey listen i got this husband and wife in knoxville tennessee that literally went through life-changing events and if they can do it, you can do it. You just got to push yourself to, to get to that point. And, and you um, can't ever worry about that either. You, you can't let that be in the back of your head ever. You just like the traveling thing. This was a wake up call. You need to get out and enjoy it a little bit more. Um, yeah. That's something that we really want to do. And and for me, that's my motivation to get up and, and, and do the grind every day, you know, so, so we can enjoy those things in life. 
Yeah. Um, you know, Haas, like he just said, it was best week he's ever had in the industry. Super fun and, and meaningful. And I agree. And, and I'm telling you, Haas and I have been on the same agreement with, with you know, being out at your place uh, since we were out there. We talk about it all the time. We always joke around like, oh, you remember when Dillinger got so fucking pissed off and we're like, yeah, yeah, you know, and all this. And then we'd, we'd laugh about you rolling around and, you know, trying to stand up and trying to tin a window and you're like, fuck this shit and, you know, whatever. And, you know, your your wife coming out of the, uh, you know, out of your little uh, office area. And she's, I don't remember what her words were, but she said something. And I said, slow down. You may trip over and fall and break, never mind, too late or something, you know, whatever I did. And she just, man, quick on her feet <laughs> no pun intended but she threw one right back at me. Yeah. oh my god when she, when she was all, all all wrapped up with her wrists and <laughs> we would lock her in rooms in the house and she's like I, I i can't get out she couldn't turn doorknobs <laughs> it was, we'd hear it this was, faint banging like is is mom stuck in the bathroom <laughs> it was uh, oh man it was just um uh, it, it was uh it was just fun. It, it really was. And like I said, you guys were absolutely in great spirits the whole week. And uh, to be honest, you know, anybody outside looking in and not knowing what happened, they I don't think anybody really grasped the magnitude because you guys didn't show that part. I, that I never let them see a sweat. Isn't that something you learn when you're young? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, so. <laughs> You know, and you guys are always welcome uh, back. Except you can't go to Texas Roadhouse. I think you're still banned from there. Uh, probably. I don't think that uh, waiter guy <laughs> didn't care for me very much. He still works there. Does he? Uh, we just, yeah, we just saw him like a month ago. We went and it was like, oh no. <laughs> um, you know, Haas just he just said no lie. I uh, I cried on the way home uh, when he did that recap. Um, I remember. I remember. Yeah. And and here's the thing is when when I saw that recap. Uh, I got emotional because I was like, wow, we were mm -hmm. all here, you know, helping you guys out. And and I even got emotional. Um, so it's it, it's a it's a good thing that you guys are still here because there's a there's a reason why. What you guys don't know, but I have that's no clue. for a reason, dude. Well, yeah, I have no clue. <laughs> well, either way, um, it is what it is. All right. So here we are. We're at an hour and 13. Dude, we only got nine people watching. So the giveaway should be pretty fucking easy. Right. So, I got that Tinder battles going on. I told you there's going to be like two and a half people watching. Dude, those people are, I mean, nothing's even <laughs> happening in Orlando right now. Like nothing's going on. People are just traveling to it. So nine people. I couldn't make it this year. Yeah. I, I'm probably going to make the, um, the, the WFR reunion. Um, I do have plans to make that. I mean, it's Chattanooga. How can I not? It's right there in my backyard. Right. So I do plan right. on going to that. We had some plans for uh, Tinder battles, but it was, you know, it's, we are tenors. We bounce back. We make money. We can plan. And and we want to go to Vegas this year. So it was either take a vacation and go to Tinder Battles because I totally did Amelia Island wrong. We showed up like the day before, didn't get to enjoy nothing, and then it was pack up, go home. Um, if you attend these events, take a vacation. Get there a few days early, spend some time, do the Tinder Battles thing, and more time after. And that's what you got to plan for. And that's why we didn't make it because we do want to – plan on a vacation later in the year so it was you know kind of priorities like ah, i i don't want to take a vacation now and then i'm going to be off again in the summer um for the, the revolution and then i got to close shop again we're taking another vacation you know how's that look to my customers it's like man these people yep. are never working what are they doing <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um you know i unfortunately i wasn't able to go um this year because uh you know doing stuff with autobahn um i had i had one of my guys do a, a grand opening uh, at the beginning of April, I promised him I, I, I was going to be there. So I was there. I got another uh, um, guy in Texas, which I have to miss, but I've got a trip in Oklahoma um, where I'm going to go see some of the other Audubon guys, uh, you know, that they haven't even got to see or meet their reps yet, you know, stuff like that. And no offense, but my work comes a little bit uh, ahead of any extra events, even though it's still industry related. But I'm just I'm taking work in place. Like that's that's number one in, in my mind right now. So I just have to skip. So it is what it is. Um, I tell you what, let's do that. We'll do giveaways super easy. And sure. and I was, looking, I was like, there's only nine people watching. 
I know it's getting late. I know people are packing and, and starting to head out, and I, I know it's getting late for you. Um, nine people watching, so we're going to do this super easy. The nine people watching, all you got to do is send me a message either on Facebook or Instagram, and I want you to tell me um, what year what year uh, Derek started tinning. Derek, don't say anything. Don't, and if you say it in the comments, it's fine, but only the nine people... Tell me what year Derek started tinning, and if all nine people get it correct, I'll send everybody a sample of the tinner coffee. Like, how easy is that? Does that work? What is what is that backdrop backdrop of? <laughs> <laughs> or that? Uh, oh, now like like ten more people just jumped in. They're like, oh, giveaways? Nope, just the nine people that were just in here. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, so you nine people. You know who you are. That's so funny. Like 10 people just fucking jumped in. Um, but anyway. That's hilarious. Uh, We're going to start seeing numbers scrolling for no reason. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Look, everybody's trying to get on there. Um, 33. 33. Uh, Derek, <laughs> this, was, this is something I definitely want you to do, though, because I, I have everybody do it because I, I think it's – and when I started doing this, I thought it was really cool because now anybody that watches the show and they come back, they actually know – you know a little bit uh more about you and just like words of uh, you know wisdom or advice so this is the i'm not an asshole i know i come across as one on the groups because no, you can't no, no. see hold context on, in in words no, i'm just you know no 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 hold on you know how i really am <laughs> i know how you are but i i want you to leave a legacy of you and like any words of wisdom advice anything like that for people to watch from here on out because it'll always be on here so here's your chance Oh man, was it was it trip that said it? Man, just put your nose down, and really grind, so you can enjoy the things you enjoy. Um, just get out there, see the world, not just your little your little comfort, your little circle of comfort. Like really enjoy the world. Get to some of these events, these dinner events. There's the guys that oh, I don't go to those things, or you know, they're silly, they're stupid. No, it's not about the competition at all. If you go to one of these events, you'll see. Nobody gives a shit where you place. It's it's all yep. about having fun, meeting the people, um, bragging rights. Who cares? <laughs> <It's>, I mean, <laughs> get to the events if you can. Travel with your family, um, and yeah, really just keep your nose down and grind, man. Absolutely no, and I and I agree. Uh, th those events, it's it's not it's not about uh, what people think it's not about bragging rights dude it's it's all about just going and networking and, and being around like-minded people um who you can literally have a great friendship with i mean i went out i went out to his shop didn't even know who he was and i'm not saying it was an event but it was a cause and look where we're at now so um Derek, thank you so much for being on the show yeah thanks for having me on man Dude, if you ever need anything, you know you can always reach out to me. And uh, if you ever want to come back on and talk more, dude, just say the word. But until then, get the fuck out. Roll out. <laughs> I had to. I had to. I didn't get to tell him to fuck off last time, so I got to this time. Yeah. Anyways, no. Guys, on a serious note, listen. If, if you guys missed the show, if you guys are just coming in or, or whatnot, or if anybody sees this later on, listen when you go through a tragic event and you still come out on top um it's a, it's a it's a huge blessing there's always going to be uh trial and error and there's always going to be like hiccups here and there but the thing is is just like Derek said keep your nose grinding just just keep going because there's always something better at the end um but anyways uh so that's here everybody's like laughing because i how i kicked them off dude that's how i kick people off the hell out of here um all right so i'm gonna turn the chats off maybe maybe just hold on fellas uh so if you guys saw right before i kicked them off those nine people i'm only gonna give you till tomorrow morning to message me after that too bad so sad and if you guys are wondering what's he talking about then you're not part of that nine <laughs> you're not part of the nine i don't care if you guys know you know if you don't Eh, too bad. You'll just have to watch the next uh, next next show or go back and watch this, and then you'll go, fuck, I missed it. It is what it is, right? Uh, on that note, you guys, have a great rest of the week. And, you know, 
I'm kind of I'm kind of feeling good. I may actually do a show next week, even though I'm doing them every other week. I may do one next week just for shits and giggles. You never know. We'll see. Uh, on that note, guys, that is it. Tinder Tuesday Live right here on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a good week. We'll see you.